Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can tell by just the massive amount of house on my screen, we are going into a lot of stuff today. But don't worry, this is going to be slightly easier than it may first appear. It's kind of a two for one because the Georgian comes in two very specific sizes. I did miss an upload this week, I'll explain that later on in the video, but let's get into the Georgian. The Georgian Colonial was based heavily on English designs popular at the time under King George I, the second, and the third. More simple colonials were already widespread throughout the colonies by the time the elegant flourishes of the overseas Georgian sort of came over. At this time, money was starting to sort of flow over on this side of the pond and people could afford slightly more decorative homes. The very utilitarian nature of most colonial homes was still definitely very much there, and we'll see that in the very square nature of these builds today. The Georgian comes in basically two sizes, the two-thirds Georgian and the full-on Georgian. You kind of have a three-bay and a five-bay design. The three-bay just means it sort of has three holes in the front of the build, which is typically window, door, window, and the five bay has five, so window, window, door, window, window. We'll be going over both the two thirds and the full on Georgians today, although it bothers me a little bit that it's called two thirds and not three fifths. Inside, you're going to see what I call a colonial floor plan, which is basically a hallway straight down the middle of the build with kitchen and dining on one side and living space on the other. If you watch the Cape Cod, we touched on it briefly there, although the Cape Cod is significantly smaller and often doesn't have all of the walls that these slightly larger colonials, such as the Georgian, do. But this makes it very easy to just lay out wherever. You draw a rectangle, a hallway, a couple of rooms on either side, and you have a colonial. Throw a roof on it and call it a day. The Georgian specifically is pretty much always two stories, although it can be seen in some three-story homes, especially where it has been adapted as a row home or townhouse. Uh, but these builds are just as commonly found in more cramped urban areas as out on sprawling estates. Throughout the history of America, the Georgian has maintains its status as one of the most popular housing styles ever since it first came over here. Which is not unlike the name George itself, which is a fun little etymology tidbit there. I know this is a lot of information and these builds look super imposing and just have that classic elegance, but I hope that you're not too intimidated. This is an extremely beginner friendly build, despite its massive size, and honestly the fact that you can make it so big so easily is part of what I think really keeps it at that sort of beginner level. Of course, if you're, if you're super advanced and you're just watching this for kicks and giggles, I hope you still stick around. Maybe we can still learn something together, but I've quickly fallen in love with the Jordan style and I really hope you will too. With that being said, we have a heck of a lot of video to get through, so let's get going. We are starting on a 64 by 64 lot today. You do not have to. I just wanted to go over a lot of information and I figured why not do it all on one lot altogether. So first we're going to build the two thirds Georgian, which could fit on a 15 by 20. And then we're going to build a full on Georgian and then talk about expanding it further to make it even larger, which is why I wanted to have all this space. Also, this is in the cats and dogs world, um, just cause I really like the lighting on this lot, but I will be building primarily with base game today. The base of the Georgian is a rectangle. So the, the shapes that I'm giving you and the numbers is literally what you're going to build. There's pretty much not going to be much modifying it. So if you want to build a little two thirds Georgian, you're going to start with a little rectangle that is 10 wide, which will be 600. And then you're going to go up eight. So you should end up with a little rectangle that costs 2160. And then in here, you're going to divide the space in half with a two tile wide hallway, draw the exact same rectangle on top. Stairs will go in this hallway. I tend to add them to the left and facing the door. Just That's just how I do it. Um, it doesn't really matter that much. And then for this particular build, I'm going to add the bathroom here, have a living room here, and then divide this space to be the kitchen and dining. Typically you want the rooms to be quite square. The reason I extended this and added a bathroom is because originally when these were designed, obviously interior plumbing was nowhere near happening. What was the toilet invented? Yeah, it was going to be nearly 100 years before toilets inside were like a thing. So this living space would most likely have actually been this full space and this would be a really convenient place to put a bathroom. And that way upstairs, you can easily fit in a nice four bedrooms. Of course, you could rearrange these walls if your sims needed them. We'll be finishing this build off a slightly more simple way than the larger one, um, just to show you a range of techniques. So let's start with the roof. The roof can either be hipped or gabled. We're going to go with hipped for this one. You want to pitch it down a little bit and you can add a slight eave if you like, which I'll be doing on this one. If you plan on adding chimneys and fireplaces to your build, they tend to go on more of the outside, something like that. Are those even? There we go. Traditionally siding reflected where in the nation these were built. If you were in the northern colonies or northern states later on, you would most likely see some sort of siding, some shingle siding, possibly even stucco, as opposed to the southern half of the country, which would be more likely to use stucco still, but also a lot of stone and brick. 
I won't leave it like this, but whatever you use, there are a lot of wallpaper options here that have these sort of decorative elements on the corners. Um, you'll see both the columns and the bricks, as well as this sort of interlaced larger stone design. Those are all really common, so grabbing a wallpaper that has that on the corners would be an excellent stylistic choice. There are siding options that come with this as well, and even brick siding combos. You can also get this look with a more stucco siding with this stony brook. For this particular build, I think I'm going to stick with bricks because I think it's pretty. Shingles can be pretty much whatever you want. As usual, some of the more square ones are going to be a bit too modern, so unless you're trying to go for a more modern vibe, which we'll discuss in a minute, I recommend going with one of the more rounded ones toward the end here. I prefer the beveled out roof trim. I don't know if I'm actually going extra fast today or if I'm just really tired so it feels like I'm going faster, but if at any point I start going too fast in these or if I start skipping over things you don't know, please let me know. I mean, I think this is like the 12th one I've done, so sometimes I forget whether I've said something in this video yet or if I said it in the last video. For the entry, you can pick a one or two tiled door, it's typically going to be sticking with short wall heights, especially for the two-thirds Georgian, um, and just something relatively simple like this exterior door with the multi-pane windows would work really, really well. I'm going to use this same door for the back of the build as well. Windows, just like most of the colonials that we're going to do, we're going to be looking for double hung, um, which just means that you can like slide them open and you are likely to see shutters. Now one thing I do want to point out again is that bay uh, idea where the two thirds are typically sort of three sections wide. Um, my sections are a little bit uneven because it's Sims 4, so you're going to have one window, a door, and then another window. If you want this window more centered, between the door and the edge of the wall, you can hit F5 and get quarter tile placement like this, or you can just center it in the room there, which would be right in the middle. So whichever one you prefer more, you can totally go for, and you'll be placing them in those same slots up above. Shuttered or not, you'll also want windows on the sides of your house. We're going to go with a set of four windows on either side, and this build revolves so much around symmetry, so you're just gonna do the exact same thing everywhere else. Also, this room is technically a bathroom, so I am actually going to delete this window. I know that gets rid of a little bit of the symmetry, but it's just incredibly uh, practical to not have a window there. As far as interior details go, you're definitely going to want to have at least one fireplace in the living area. I'm going to put mine right here, sort of in the center of the build. Most likely you're going to have doors leading from room to room, but as always, if you want to sort of modernize the space, you can grab some arches. Typically something pretty simple will work just fine although doors, windowed or not, are great options as well. If you really want to modernize the space, taking down a couple of these walls would be good, but I highly recommend keeping the same general layout where you have mostly a hallway, whether it's closed in or not, in the middle of your build, and then your kitchen and dining on one side and living space on the other. Mostly going to see hardwood floors reflecting the wood of the region, aka uh, whatever you want. Wallpapers are going to heavily reflect whatever sort of era you want your build to feel like it's from. If you're looking for something a little bit more original, Going for something with trims like this or paneling would be a great option. And if you're going for something that feels a little more modern, sticking to just the baseboards, painting the walls any more solid color can really help with that modern feel as well. In kitchens, you're typically going to see more wooden cabinets. I recommend going with something that sort of matches your floor. And if you're running into an issue that, like this, I forgot I had move objects on, um, where it's sort of blocking out some of your window, you have a couple of really good options for that. You can either get a very similar window that's just shorter, or you can go for something slightly wider that sort of matches, I mean, the panes aren't the exact same size, but it's still a paned window. It'd be ideal if it could still like open, because um, that makes the most sense for a kitchen anyway, but I don't think we have any windows like that. That'd just be too convenient. Kitchens aren't going to be too terribly large or spectacular, as this is a relatively small home size. However, you should have room for a small kitchen table, extra storage, or even an island if you really want one. A two-tile table and four chairs is about as much as you're going to be able to fit into this dining area. If you need more space, you can just scooch this kitchen wall over a touch and align the table like this. Then you should either be able to grab a three tile table and have three chairs on either side or just add chairs on the ends. If you want to scooch your archways, by the way, you can just hold alt and sort of slide it along the walls, which is super handy for situations like this. Do have a couple other little details to add to the front of this build. We're going to start with a very small little two by one sort of front. Um, it's not really a deck, is it? It's quite small. This will help if you decide to raise your build on a foundation, which will at most be maybe maybe two or three um, sort of levels, although just, just barely off the ground is most common. And I'm going to add a little gable roof 
right above the door. I'm going to lower the pitch so that it doesn't block that window, and grab a few columns. I'm just going to be using these cheap columns. If you use the beveled out roof trim for the roof edge, and then this beveled roof trim for this piece right here, it can look like the uh, roof is sort of supported a little extra right there without having to add any spandrels or anything, which I mean, of course you could, but I kind of like how just that looks for this slightly more simple version of the Georgian. And you can just finish that off with the same roof texture and wall paint. And that is how you build the two-thirds Georgian Colonial in The Sims 4. Let's do a really quick recap because I just want to reiterate that this will always be the same. For most of my builds, I talk about how to make one room larger or smaller, but to maintain the ratio, at most you're going to change this by one tile in any direction. So it's going to be a 10 by 8 rectangle with a two tile hallway in the middle. The rooms on either side should be pretty much divided in half, although again it is The Sims 4 so we might have to have a little bit of wiggle room there. Then upstairs again with the two tile hallway, and you can fit up to four um, square bedrooms upstairs. Again, you can fudge the walls a little bit if you need to for your particular family. Add a roof, maybe a couple of chimneys, and this little entry stoop if you really want to. But that is how you build a two-thirds Georgian. Now let's build the big brother George. So this is Georgie, we're going to build actual George now. That'd be a much cuter name if we called these Georgies instead of two-thirds Georgians. Anyway, I'm not in charge of the world though. So for this one, I'm going to be doing the five bay system that I talked about in the intro, which just means five sort of equal sections, which will be window, window, door, window, window. For this one, each bay is actually going to be the same size, which will be three tiles. Occasionally you might see a six or seven bay Georgian style home. So if you wanted to expand it to that, you would just add an additional three tiles for each sort of bay you wanted to add. This one's five though, so that will be 15 tiles this way. And then we're going to go back 12. This will put you at 3240. I misclicked. There we go. So this one is definitely not a budget home. But these templates are great for if you just want to get really good at throwing together some houses for your families because this is pretty much always going to be a 15 by 12 rectangle. Again, you can sort of scooch it one way or the other, a tile or two here or there, but to get that same ratio that the Georgians are known for and why you see them look pretty much the same everywhere, 15 by 12. This one will get a beautiful three tile hallway right in the middle. You can then divide these spaces into four even six by six square rooms and then add your stairs. Again, I just tend to put mine on the left. It doesn't really matter. Upstairs, we're going to grab that same size rectangle, put our little hallway right down the middle. And how I opted to split this space up when I was doing my test build is actually to have two large bedrooms on this side and three slightly smaller bedrooms on this side. You could probably sneak in another one if you really wanted to. I can then dedicate this 3x3 space to have an ensuite for this being like the master bedroom and have a family bathroom right here at the top of the stairs. So again, your floor plan for the full-on Georgian Colonial is going to be 15 by 12 with four 6x6 rooms and one three tile wide hallway. Upstairs, you can split this into either four square bedrooms again, just like with the Georgie over here. I think that the five bedroom system works a little better, and then you can easily add two bathrooms at either end of the hall. I'm going to give you a couple of options for how to address the top story of your build. Now, Georgians are just like two stories, but you can add dormers as sort of a partial third story, and you can make that space playable. However, the first thing we actually want to do here is grab your platform tool and draw a platform, and then just level it down one. So basically, it's like we just did one of these and moved it around, it's just faster. Now, we can draw some dormers. Typically, you'll sort of want these to line up with your bays. You can have as many or as few as you want. I'm just going to go ahead and do the full five bays. And since each bay in this build is going to be approximately three tiles, like that's my unit of measurement here, I'll be spacing these in the middle of each three tile section. To make this space playable, obviously a one tile wide room isn't good for much. So you're going to still keep your room tool and go in three tiles on your short side like this, and then pull it all the way across the other side. Now you have a very nice open space that you can totally use. Just get rid of these little wall pieces here. And to get up this way, you could either use a staircase with the like underside removed, and you can stack it like this or you could use a ladder. Up here, do whatever you want. Add more bedrooms, add storage. It's just convenient sometimes to have that extra space, or you could just leave the dormers closed off as one tile rooms, or you could just skip the dormers altogether. Lots of options. If you don't do this option, what you're going to do next is just place a gable roof over this whole thing. But since we have this playable space, we will be doing it a little bit of a different way. First, grab your half-hipped roof, 
place it on the side and for this one we'll be going with no eaves so pull those in and then drag it all the way across. Because we are building with a short wall height and it is three tiles in we don't actually have to adjust the pitch so that's awesome. This continues to be a beginner friendly home even if it is huge. Place that same piece on the other side and now you can grab your gable to finish it off. I am going to use the gable to roof the dormers, however I think that this without the eaves looks a little silly so I am just going to add those side eaves back in and then copy and place this on all the rest of the pieces by holding shift. Once again if you want to add chimneys they're going to go more toward the edges of your build. Siding options for the George are the same as for the Georgie. I'm going to go with the Stony Brook. Something that you're going to see fairly often on the larger Georgian homes, the fancier one, is going to be a dented trim um, around the base of the roof. And what dented means is it looks like it has teeth, which are these little like square bits here. It's even called dental exterior trim. Uh, and this is a floor trim, which is why we added that floor, ple floor piece uh, up at the top. And we can get our roof to line up with that trim just a little bit better by switching it out for the beveled roof trim. Front door is actually going to be a fairly similar concept to this door over here, although it can be up to three tiles wide. So if we want to use one that already has sort of the decorative columns on either side, the framed double door or the double door with side lights and faux columns would both be excellent options. Just place that right smack dab in the center. The windows are going to be the exact same, and this time we'll place them specifically on the middle tile of every three tile section upstairs and down. The same spacing applies to the sides because they are also multiples of three. Don't you love math? These windows with the shutters will not really fit on our dormers, but this version, the octopane, will. And with the um, F5 tool enabled where it lets you place on quarter tiles, you should be able to place them right level with the roof on the bottom there, no problem. And there we are all windowed up. Our little front entrance for this one is going to be a little bit fancier. I'm going to make a 3x2 tile entrance and then copy this and place it directly above. This way I can actually apply that very same dental trim and then when I place my gable roof piece, just like the other one, it just looks a little bit fancier. Now if this is too overwhelming for you, I have a second option. If you move your roof over, you can actually raise the level of the platform of this piece and add some platform trim, which is down here. Uh, something with a little bit of shape to it like this one and then put your roof back, and it's a little bit more simple that way. This little triangular bit above the door is called a pediment. It is quite common in most styles that borrow from sort of the Greco-Roman influence, and if you'd like to see a build that borrows more from that, I highly recommend checking out the Greek Revival, which I can link in the card up here. Uh, that was a really fun one. We did some similar work with the roof that ended up uh, pretty good, so yeah, if you kind of like where this is going but you just want it to be like even fancier, I really recommend checking that one out. We are still going to use columns here. Now typically anything sort of round is going to work just fine. This Greco-Roman column I think is what I'm going to use for this one. And speaking of columns, I do want to show you one other thing when it comes to the corners of your build. Let's pretend for a second that you want to use this country field stone, which is beautiful and it would look really really nice, but you still want to get that corner detailing. You can use columns. If I use the same Greco-Roman column, I could place them right on top of each other, but that looks kind of weird. So instead what I would do is actually raise this column and it will automatically stop um, at the top of the build. And you can still sort of get that corner detail, which is really nice. I don't recommend using the round columns just because it looks kind of weird, but we don't really have any good square options sort of in the base game. Like this is as good as we're gonna get and that just looks weird. However, if you have pretty much any other pack, um, a lot of these column options will work great. The get together column is one of my absolute favorites just because it's so simple, so that one looks really great. We also have a concrete column from the get famous pack, which is just a little beefier, also looks beautiful. Even the cats and dogs column has a little bit of a slope to it, but that almost just makes it look more weathered and like it's been there longer. But to keep this base game friendly, I am just going to stick with the wallpapers today. I'm going to raise this one up on a slightly higher foundation. If you choose to use a foundation, I recommend using brick. I'll be going with a gray brick since I have some gray stone sort of accents. And then a nice little staircase here. This can be the full three tiles or just the one, but you do need some way to get up there. And this is pretty much as high of a foundation as you're going to see on a Georgian. One last thing before I move on is we do need some sort of back entrance. You can make this larger or smaller. I'm going to make it a bit smaller and then above it, I'm going to do that same sort of copy and place the floor piece. But it can also be quite common to actually have like a little walkout area um, above your either front or back entrance. 
I chose to put the pediment on the front entrance, and we could put this one back here, which means it'll be coming out of the bathroom, but weirdly enough, I've seen that in a lot of old homes. And then just use the same columns and everything. Grab some floor trim to make the columns look like they're actually holding on to something. And that's pretty much the gist of the Georgian. I will do a recap on what makes this style this style. First though, we still have to discuss expansion, touch on modernization, go over landscaping, and I do have a couple of little housekeeping notes to share with you guys. First off, I know this is a bit of a longer video. I really wanted to cover both the two thirds and the full style Georgian in the same video. It didn't make a ton of sense for me to do two separate ones, and I didn't want to like do one now and then one in January, so I just put them both in the same video together. Plus, I think this is a really cool way of showing just how simple or how slightly more complex a Georgian can be while it's still like the same house. So hopefully you don't mind. If you do mind, you can let me know in the comments and I will just not do this again. Also, I did miss an upload this week. Um, we had an electrician come in and he was supposed to be here for about an hour and ended up taking about four. I still don't know why. As far as I know, nothing went wrong. It was just a really weird day. So I did miss an upload. And if that happens again, what my plan is, is actually just to shift any videos that I miss into November. So we'll still get 31 different home styles. It's just some of them might be leaked into November as opposed to staying here in October. So if you're worried that I'm skipping homes or whatever, I'm not, they'll just be pushed into November. If you could do me a huge favor and hit like and subscribe, we can go ahead and continue with the Georgies and Georgians and how they come together to make more because that's literally what we're doing next. If you want to expand the Georgian, basically what you're going to do is add a Georgie on either side. I don't know if I can do it like this, but yeah, I can't actually join the two pieces together. All right, that's fine. Basically, you'll do your 8x12 rectangle, match the siding, match the foundation, match your windows. And to enter this space, you'll either add doors here or sort of make a hallway coming down this way. And that would be your first expansion. I mean, you'd probably want to roof it about like that, and if you needed even more space, you're going to copy this room and place it on top, put your roof back, and then if you want even more space, you just do the same thing on the other side, and then you have like a massive Georgian. And if you want even more space, because yes, literally this is like Legos, you just keep stacking and stacking, you can take that same room and copy it again and start coming off this direction. One story or two, grab your roof, and because they're the same pitch, they should just line up seamlessly and you just keep going <laughs> like it's crazy literally so we've got the Georgie we've got the George these are two units that are pretty much the same everywhere and then you just sort of stack them together like Legos or like mega blocks and you you build massive houses with it so this is probably the most beginner friendly way to make a mansion that is simple yet stunning and I will take a bow now I think that's really cool that's you just keep you just keep adding on uh, legacy house, anyone? If I ever do a legacy, I should definitely just do this because it's going to be so much easier. And these don't all have to be like rooms and stuff. This could be a pool house. You could have an uh, in-law suite. You could have a secret mystery murder room where people paint and then you kill them and steal their paintings for money or whatever. Not that anybody in the Sims community would ever play the game like that. Anyway, hopefully you guys are as tickled by this as I am. And if you are and you haven't already, you need to subscribe because that's this is what we do here. These little guys can have their own chimneys as well. I haven't decided how I'm going to upload this to the gallery yet, but I will figure it out by the time this video is up. So all that information will be down in the description of this video if you're keen on downloading this build, taking a closer look at it, just stealing my hard work. Um, it's fine. If you want to modernize this build, a couple of the easiest ways, and we touched on them uh, in the Georgie as well, is to start off by replacing any of your interior doors with arches. I don't have any in this build, um, just because we went over it all in this one, but same concept. Updating your kitchen cabinets, updating wall colors, and doing wallpapers that don't have trim inside or out um, are definitely great ways to do that as well. You could always simplify this trim for something a little smaller. Switching out your windows for something that has fewer panes or even no panes is a great way to get a more modern look as well. Landscaping is going to depend on how fancy you want your build to feel. For something little like our little Georgie over here, we're probably just going to grab a few shrubs to put up against the base of the build, like this, maybe some small flowers, but we're going to keep it pretty symmetrical and simple. A little bit of terrain paint goes a long way, and just doing a very simple path of gravel or stone will work just fine. And a little terrain paint around the foundation always just acts as a nice little outline to help lift your build off the ground. If you make a mistake, the eraser tool is your best friend. And that's how I'm going to landscape little Georgie here. Now for the big boys. 
you could do something way more impressive. If you find you have a very large build and a lot of yard space to use up, I highly recommend adding some sort of pond. I have a whole video about this which I'll link up in this card here. It can really help you fill in a lot of that space. If you want to really help it feel fancy and manicured, keep it symmetrical just like the rest of the build. Symmetry is a huge thing and adding something like these cypress trees in a straight row can really help your build feel elegant and of course you can always fill it in with some shrubs, flower beds, and really whatever else suits your fancy. I've covered landscaping a lot in these videos and I have a few videos just strictly about landscaping so because this video is already so long I'm not going to go in depth on that today. Just stick with the regular rules of it should generally reflect the overall size and style of the build, so more ornate for larger builds, something simple for smaller builds. When in doubt, grab some of the plants in the world around you, which I won't be doing today because it's not base game. Always add terrain paint and just have some fun. Landscaping is a great place to let your creativity shine, especially for builds that don't really have a set landscaping style like this one. I kind of see it like this. The Colonials as a group have been around since like the formation of the country and technically even before that. Because of this, they've seen all the fads come and go and throughout the years, the Georgian has continued to be one of the most popular architectural styles for both old and new constructions. It can support pretty much anything with its very simple and just classical, dependable shape and style. Basically, it's a great blank canvas for whatever else your sims life may throw at them. For a dimensional recap, the Georgie, the two-thirds Georgian, is going to be, in your game, a 10 tile by 8 tile space. You'll have a hallway in the middle and you'll divide the rooms on either side however you see fit. This is how I've done this one. If you want to build a full-on Georgian, then you're going to go 15 tiles side to side and 12 tiles deep. You can then get four six tile square rooms in your main floor, again rearranging the walls a touch if you need to, and still have a lovely three tile wide hallway down the middle. Copy and paste for your second story, add a couple of bedrooms, and if you want to expand, just add either the little two-thirds Georgian or another full-size Georgian sort of on the sides of your build, either one or two stories. And if you want to add dormers and roof pieces up at the top of your build, you can do so as well. And those expansions will end up looking something like this, and those are your basic dimensions. I recommend checking out the rest of the series if you haven't already, which is in this top card here. You can also check out this card, which is a full playlist of all roofing tips. If you're newer to the game, I highly recommend you check that one out. It goes over everything from how to use the roofing tool, to how to adjust pitch, to how to fix clipping issues, to how to roof a handful of specific build styles. Also, here's that video about ponds, and I do have a handful of other landscaping videos as well. Uh, again, if I miss any uploads in the rest of this month, I'll just push those videos over into November. I believe, though, I'll be back tomorrow, and I look forward to building with you again then. Bye!